Good morning. Uh, it is it is a good morning. It is wonderful to have so many people here today to celebrate. Uh, today is Confirmation Sunday, as you just noticed, if you weren't aware already, but I'm pretty sure all of you were aware. So uh, we are here today to celebrate our confirmants, but that's not all we're here to celebrate today. We're here to celebrate um, the second graders that are here are getting a Bible. We're also going to be ce celebrating the seniors uh, that um, are part of this church community. So it's Senior Sunday as well. And uh, last but not least, I think that might be last. There might be something else. But last but not least, I think, is it's Mother's Day. So we're celebrating um, the mothers among us uh, and around us, mothers and anyone who's been a mother figure. Uh, maybe if not even a biological mother, we are celebrating all of you as well. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here. I want to just make some quick announcements, a little bit about the service, just so we're all on the same page, but, um, and then a couple of prayer concerns as well. Uh, today, as I said, we're celebrating all these things, and the service is going to be quite different. Uh, instead of there being a regular sermon today, uh, there's going to be a couple different places in the ser service where the confirmation students are going to be sharing what we call their statement of faith. And that is kind of what we have started doing as a, um, perhaps a replacement of maybe in the old days when we used to get them up here and quiz them in front of everybody and give them a test and make sure they knew all their P's, uh, dot their I's and cross their T's as far as theology and things like that. Now, they learned all of that stuff, they went through all of that stuff, but we wanted to make it more of a personal um, uh, component. And so they have put together and worked very hard in putting statements of faith together. And they're just a few minutes long each, but they're so meaningful. And I know that you will all appreciate uh, those, perhaps even your kids, grandkids, loved ones, but also each and every other one here today. I'm sure it will encourage and inspire you. So the statements of faith are split into different places because we have eight confirmants today, uh, which is awesome. But we didn't want to do all of them in a row and the poor last person, everybody would fall asleep. Because even I know as a pastor, even if it's a good sermon, by the end of the sermon, people are falling asleep. So we want to split it up so that nobody falls asleep. Everybody is excited for every part that comes. Um, and nonetheless, that's how the service is going to lay out. Um, for the most part, and otherwise, we'll walk through that together step by step. There is also an insert. If you didn't notice, it has the graduating seniors, uh, nice pictures on the front, some information about them, and then also on the back, some information about each of the confirmants. Just so for those of you who aren't familiar with everyone here, um, you'll be able to know that. Also, lastly, uh, there, is a comp there is a potluck dinner afterwards, so uh, you are all welcome to stay. Um, I know that, that some people made more, way more food than uh, you know, probably needed to, and so we're going to have plenty of food, so don't worry about that. If you perhaps didn't bring something, everyone is welcome to stay and celebrate. I'll also do a brief interview with each of the seniors who are graduating as well, so we can learn a little bit about what their plans are going forward. Um, other than that, I'm going to leave the rest of the announcements and the prayer concerns. Though there are ones that we have had for, for some time. We'll, we would include those in the prayers of the church um, through today and through this, these coming weeks. But is there anything that I might have missed or that needs to be added here this morning? Uh, yes. Yes, thank you for that. Yep. Um, I, had, uh, I, I heard yesterday... Um, both from Katrina and another uh, member of the church, that uh, Harlan Carroll had passed away um, a couple of nights ago. And so we'll be keeping the Carroll family, his brother, uh, other loved ones, and friends um, of the Carrolls in prayer here this week. I believe the service is on Thursday. Is that right? Okay. Uh, were there any other announcements or prayer concerns that wanted to be added here this morning? Okay, uh, if not, then at this time, uh, I'm going to invite um, the second grader. I think the only second grader here today is Kaysen, is that right? 
Okay, I'm going to invite Case and Van Inc. forward, um, and then also we'll have Amanda come forward, and she is going to present the uh, Bible. Now, all of our second graders, the other second grader that we have as part of the church is Brooke Huber, but she wasn't able to be here today. So um, we give these to our second graders as they're learning to read quite well, probably by this point, and we just wish them blessings as they come to learn God's word. So let's hear a hand for Casey. All right, I'll have everyone now please stand and turn in your green hymnals um, to page 56 for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> you may be seated, and please turn in your hymnal to 783, which is um, Seek Ye First. And before we start that, um, I want to just read a quick scripture. This is going to be my only 30-second sermon of the day. Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, do not worry then, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink? Or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows what you need, all, knows that you need all these things. But instead, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you. So just taking the the opportunity here to, to have the first word for the confirmants. I'm just going to share one quote from another pastor. And this is the verse I wrote in all of your cards, Matthew 6.33. So when you see that, you'll know why I wrote it. And he wrote this about it. He says, God says when you align your heart with, my, with his heart and your plans with his purposes, that he will give you the things that the rest of the world grasps for. Right? So God says, seeking him first, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. The message there is aligning your heart with his. And I can't think of a better message. I can't think of a better idea to think of as you're being confirmed and as you go and make your faith your own. That's really what confirmation is about, is remembering this verse, Matthew 6, to seek first each and every morning, to each and every, and each and every day to make it a priority, to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Because all of the things and all of the worries and all of the things that we seek after and worry about, God says he wants to give us if we align our heart with his. And he promises he will. So now let's sing, Seek Ye First, 783.
ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and be found. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. We do not live. Okay, at this time, I am going to invite Brogan, Alice, and Natalie up to the front. morning. <clears throat> I have learned many things about faith through the church, confirmation, class, and life itself. Although I have not understood what all of it means, my goal is to comprehend it and use it in my life. In my opinion, this is what a faith journey looks like, working to learn and understand what faith is and how it is involved in my life. Through my 15 years and four months of life, I have known many people who have demonstrated their faith and shown me that God is worthy of our trust. But the person that has shown their faith to me most clearly would have to be my grandma, Kathy. Grandma would go to church every Sunday, and it was very rare if the family didn't go. Now, I have never talked to her about why she believes in God or why she trusts so much in the Bible. But her example has shown me that hope is always the solution to a problem we do not have the answer for. My grandma has always had the mindset but also the mindset that if she wanted something to happen, she would do it herself. When I say she has done all for herself, it's not because she doesn't trust in God to do it for her, but more because she believes that God trusts in her. She knows that being Christ-like requires both faith and works. Just like James 2.17 says, So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Another scripture that is important to me is Psalm 23. That chapter begins with, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This passage took me many tries to comprehend. When I first read it, I was stuck. I had no idea what he meant by shepherd. Furthermore, what he meant by I shall not want. Then it hit me. A shepherd is an overlooking being. It may seem like they do not do much throughout the day, but they stay ready at all, all times to help. The second part stumped me for a couple weeks, though, probably because I forgot to do it. But I felt the scripture was saying that no matter what happens, whether you want God in your life or not, he will be there. Ms. Gackle told me that this was not the right interpretation for the scripture, but that it was still a good idea. What I mean is that while I continue to grow, there will be times when God is going to be needed, and he will be there. But on the other hand, when I don't need him, uh, he will also be there, just in case. Faith is not a thing that comes throughout time, but something that can grow with a person. My faith will not only grow with me, but it will grow through and the people around me as well, who will impact my own faith. The more I surround myself with people and experiences that reflect God's character, the closer I will grow to him. I need to invite him into my life, not as a fairway God figure to believe in, but as a person I can trust will be there for me. Through scripture or events in my life, I will continue to learn how he wants me to teach and what his voice sounds like from all the other opinions. With faith in my life and a better understanding of it, I can spread this to the others and help me, help my faith grow as well as their own. So when I sat down to write my statement of faith, I had some self-reflection to do to help me identify my own faith. 
What I recognized is that my faith has been influenced by my family and scripture, teaching me that God has a plan for my life, even when I'm going through something difficult. I have seen my grandparents, um, Linda and Fred, demonstrate faith in their everyday lives. My grandpa is always willing to preach on a Sunday when the pastor can't, or sing in a small group for worship. My grandma has devoted a lot of time to getting the church ready for different events over the years, filling in as the, as the pianist in church, and sometimes running the sound system. She is always ready to step in wherever she's needed, and her and my grandpa attend faith church regularly. So I wondered, why does this look like an example of faith to me? I mean, going to church isn't the point of faith. So I dug a little deeper. Personally, I wouldn't give that much time and devotion to something unless I absolutely, without a doubt, loved and believed in it. So, not only did my grandparents show their fondness for the Lord in their work at the church, but also wanted to help others around them worship and find their own faith. And I think that is really what displays their faith in my eyes. Psalm 100 is a special verse to me because it was my great-grandma Caroline's favorite verse. She could recite it by heart until she passed, and I learned it as well. I think that this verse has stuck with me through my life because I started hearing it at such a young age. I'm going to break the scripture into sections and explain how I interpret it. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. If you know me, you likely know about my love for music. I'm almost always either singing my head or out loud. During COVID, our family did church from home, and I often sang with my parents or as a whole family this on the service online. And that was something I really enjoyed. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. I think this part is instructing us to be humble and recognize that we would not have made it this far on our own. We need a good shepherd. Even when you don't feel like he is there, God is shepherding us because he has a plan for all of us. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord he is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures through all generations. This ending to me screams that everything is going to work out. How could it not if the Lord is good, and his mercy and truth will endure for all generations, as the text reads. Again here, I see that God will be faithful to his plan for us, and it is important for me to remember that through the ups and downs of life. I feel hopeful when I think about my faith and the lessons I've learned about God from my own life and those around me. My mom has a little sign hanging from the rearview mirror of the car that says, not to spoil the ending, but everything's going to be all right. I really like that because remembering that God has a plan helps keep me grounded when I'm facing challenges. Martin Luther King Jr. sums it up best when I'm trying to say through this quote, faith is taking the first step even when you can't see the whole staircase. My journey of faith has been made up of a lot of questions about God and my relationship with him. When talking to older adults, they still ask questions about their faith too. What I have learned is that asking questions can strengthen our faith because questions make us trust God for the answers. The Bible tells us many times to trust the Lord. In Proverbs 3.5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. God promises that if we trust and rely on him, he will lead us in the right direction. In Exodus, when the Israelites were leaving Egypt, they had to have faith in God that he would lead them to the promised land. However, once they left Egypt, the Israelites began to complain and worship idols. It became clear that they only wanted a way out of Egypt and not a life with God. In the end, Joshua and Caleb were the only two people from the original group who were allowed to enter the promised land because they had a real relationship with God and trusted him to provide. Part of trusting God means trusting that he created me just as I am. He didn't create us all to be the same, but knowing that I am meant to be different is hard to follow through with because we live in a society where you are supposed to follow all the trends and not stand out. I'm working on trusting God to give me the strength to step out of my comfort zone. It is a lot more fun to live my own life instead of trying to fit in. For example, by trying different sports or hobbies, I have learned what to pursue and what to leave behind. By embracing my unique interest, I know I'm finding the purpose God gave me. As I discover who God created me to be, I will better show the light of God to others. We should all go to bed knowing that someone from our day thought, wow, I can really see God in them. Living with the school has made me a happier person. I have found that living for God and not for others is where true happiness comes from. As I find my purpose and trust God to guide me on the path, 
for my faith, I also find where I belong. We all want to be a part of something bigger. By believing in God, you become a part of a huge family of believers, where you will find comfort, joy, and wisdom. By following God's instructions, he has shown me where I belong with him in society. This is the goal I am trying to reach as I am learning to trust God and follow the unique path he has for me. Over the years, my faith and life have taught me many things, and now I'm working to understand how they are meant to work together. I've, I have to allow God to take the reins and lead me through the right direction. However, having that trust is something I think a lot of people struggle with. When you struggle, you can remember that even when you wander off God's path for you, he is waiting for you to come back and let him lead you further. Knowing there is someone that great that loves you unconditionally is very reassuring. Thank you, Brogan, Alice, and Natalie. As I'm sure you all agree, it's, there's a lot of wisdom in that, and um, it's just beautiful to hear. So we're now going to turn to the Kyrie. If you would please stand again for, for that, and that's on page 57 in the Green Hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Okay, now please remain standing and turn in your hymnal for the hymn of praise today, which is uh, one, of, one of the requested ones from one of the confirmants, and that's for the fruit of all creation. It's a familiar tune, even if you don't recognize the title. Just reward of labor, God's will is done. In the help we give our neighbor, God's will is done. In our worldwide task of caring for the hungry and despairing, in the harvests we are sharing. You may now be seated, and I'll invite Ali Lugadensky, Kaylee Van Inc., and McKenna Cook. Thank you. 
journey of faith. There have been many ups and downs, but through these times, I have held strong knowing that God makes everything happen for a reason. In my two years of confirmation, I have been able to build my relationship with God by learning about different scriptures, events, and biblical history, and, faith, and the faith in people around me. When I was thinking about someone in my life who demonstrates faith, I thought of my grandma Anne. My grandma Anne demonst has demonstrated a life of faith through committed attendance to a church and re reaching out to God when things are hard. I look up at my grandma and how she demonstrates her faith because it is obvious she trusts God to help her and her loved ones when they are in a time of need. I tend to reach out to God more when life is stressful. I have been looking to God a lot in my life recently recently because at the end of the school year, all my extracurriculars have become overwhelming. I look at God when I need someone to listen to my rants about how stressful it can be to stay caught up with schoolwork when, when you are gone all the time for sports or FFA. Knowing I have someone who will always be there to listen to me and help me get through stressful days or weeks helps me to keep going. Then I'm not just stuffing my emotions or fears or anxieties. I'm processing them with my creator who listens and loves me. In Acts 16, there is a story of Paul and Silas finding, it, finding peace in trying times. Paul and Silas were preaching the gospel when they were taken captive, severely beaten, put in inner cell of prison, and their feet were put in stocks. And yet, in that difficult situ situation, Paul and Silas were singing and praying in the jail. By choosing to praise God in those circumstances, they also showed their love for God to the other prisoners and guards. Some people may wonder why we should believe in something that people not everyone around us believes in. But in my opinion, believing in God can bring a sense of hope and happiness that is worth occasional weird look. This, is, this passage from Acts is a good reminder that even in the worst of times, if you believe, God will be there to help and guide you. I hear him saying that if I believe, he will be there in the darkest of times to help me get through them and will, and will use my faithfulness to impact others. No one can live a life without stress or worries. But building a relationship with God will give you a way to deal with those challenges. Personally, I find talking to God when I need someone to be there for me and not judge the way I'm feeling is a great way to get through these hard times and make everyday life easier. I believe that faith is not just about personal salvation, but also about making a positive impact in the world. For this reason, I want to share God's light, hope, and compassion with others. I have seen the value of faith in action from the example of my basketball team. Before every single game, we would pray. While we prayed before every single game, it felt like we all gained a stronger bond and sense of unity. The girls on that team are so good at building each other up, praying before every game grounded us in something bigger than all of us and reminded us of why we were working together and building each other up. Through being part of the girls' basketball team, I felt more confidence in myself than I ever have. The girls on that team were demonstrating a verse in the Bible that means a lot to me. In 1 Thessalonians 5.11, Paul tells the church to encourage and build each other up. I feel like Paul is showing us in this verse that Christians should let the example of Jesus motivate them to build up one another. I also feel that Paul really wants everyone to build each other up because the life of a Christian is not meant to be focused on yourself. <coughs> It doesn't matter if you don't like that person, but you should always be kind, even if they aren't being nice to you. This is not always easy to do, and I don't do it perfectly, but God's grace and forgiveness gives me the chance to try again. All of this is an example of how God's love ripples out in the world. The girls on my team are showing me how to love one another by building up one another. I take all of that and express what they have done for me. Jesus describes this very thing in John 13, 34-35. The verse John 13, 34 through 35 says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. I feel like this verse means that you should set an example for the world to see, just like how the older girls set example for us eighth graders and how we took in what they did for us. I believe that spiritual growth is essential for personal growth, but it shouldn't stop there. We should always be looking for ways to make a difference and build up the people around us. Through my journey of faith, God has given me many opportunities and challenges that have taught me to trust in Him. And when I do, God is with me every step of the way. These experiences help me, have helped shape me into the person I am. 
There are times when it is difficult to understand what God has planned, but I know God will never give me a challenge I cannot handle. The Bible is like a letter from the Lord to his children, and he gives us examples from right, of right from wrong. It's important that I listen to those words and do my best to make the right choice. But he also reminds us often of his grace and forgiveness. One thing I've taken from the Bible is that God wants us to trust in him instead of worrying about the future. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Also, James 4 verse 2 states, You want what you don't have, so you scheme to kill and get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them, yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. These words have changed my perspective because I know I have not always asked God for help or for what for what I need. You can't handle the the life you can't handle life by yourself. It's not going to work. Instead, God wants us to take the time to talk to him and tell him what we are wishing for in life so that he can make, meet our needs. My parents have been a great example for me in, in this. I have watched them trust in God and talk to him. As I started to do the same thing, I slowly started to trust in the Lord's plan for my life. I know God has been present in the last couple of months as my cousins have been watching their grandpa work through some medical conditions. Even though he is not my grandpa, he has been a part of my li life growing up. It hel is helpful to know as we watch loved ones deal with challenges that God is with them. Although we may not feel the timing is right, my cousins and I know that you must trust in God's plan. My parents not only have shown me how to trust in God, they have also set examples and encouraged me to be like Christ. Character is very important in our family. My parents have taught me to do things out of the goodness of my heart and not to expect anything in return. In addition, my parents have taught me accountability and integrity. They have shown me that I need to make the right decision even when no one is watching and to not say something if someone if I would not want someone to say it to me. Like them, I have learned to lead by serving, whether in church, volunteering at an event, or helping someone who needs it. Being a servant leader is another way to be like Christ. It's important to surround yourself with a positive role models to reinforce the character you want to have. This past year, I had the opportunity to practice and play with the varsity basketball team. They show me how your faith can always be can be with you always, no matter who you are around. We sometimes went to church together. We prayed for before every game. Through this experience, I found myself wanting to be closer to Jesus. It was the best feeling to share your faith with not only your family, but your friends. I hope to use this example in my future to guide and help others know that it's okay to ask God to be with you. Even if you are surrounded by people of diverse backgrounds, you can pray together, believe together, and worship God together. Since I have started confirmation, I have realized how I can take more responsibility in my faith by praying, reading the Bible, trusting in God, and surrounding myself with others who will help me be more like Christ. Praying and believing in God is important. However, I've learned I must take the time to just talk to God about my life, whether it's good things or bad things, I just have that, or the things I just have questions about. I will continue to ask God to be with me in this voyage of living it out my faith. Uh, thank you, you three. Okay, if you would now again, please stand, get a little exercise, uh, and be standing now for the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. The prayer can be found in, uh, inside the bulletin, uh, printed out. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own. And by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, you may be seated. At this time, we'll have our reader um, come forward for today's readings. Good morning, morning. and congratulations to our second graders, our confirmants, our seniors, and of course our mothers. So good to see you you all here. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Acts, the first chapter. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus, for he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection." So they proposed two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Here ends our first reading. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 1. It's found on page 215 in the Green Book. We will read it responsibly half verse by half verse. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked. Their delight is in the law of the Lord. And they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked is Here ends our psalm. Our second reading this morning is from the book of 1 John, the fifth chapter. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Here ends our reading. shall we go you have the words of eternal life alleluia alleluia this is the holy gospel according to saint john the 17th chapter jesus jesus prayed i have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world they were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. 
I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the, wor and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I am asking you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Um, you may be seated. Before I invite the last two, I think that's what's next. Um, before I invite, the, yes, I want to um, offer a shout out um, and just a, a, a show of appreciation. So maybe most of you know, but if you don't know, um, I have not been the confirmation teacher for this class. Well, and that's not entirely true. Um, I tried to start, and um, I don't know what it was, but as a teacher, the best decision I made was to ask my wife to be the teacher. And um, the, uh, the experience I think that um, the kids have had and that Sarah has had with them has been uh, very special. They have really clicked together well. If you've been to their classes or been within 100 feet, uh, you know that it's uh, rambunctious. They have a lot of fun. They learn a lot. Um, but I think they've all come to love each other. I know Sarah has a deep love for each of them. And so I'm just so grateful, Sarah. Thank you for, for doing that. And I think that all of them are also thankful. Um, and so also when you're hearing these statements of faith, Sarah helped work through those. Sarah helped bring them to the point where they were confident to stand up here and speak, which is not easy. Um, public speaking alone is difficult, much less sharing vulnerably about your own faith. So um, there's a lot happening in this service and what they're doing. And so thank you to all of you for the work that you put in for that and for Sarah for teaching. Um, I so much appreciate it. And I know the church does as well. So with that, I'm going to invite the final two to come up and share their statements. We have Tegan Young and Nathan Sheely. I just want to really quickly say hi to my grandma who really wanted to be here but couldn't make it. So, happy Mother's Day. Uh, throughout my faith journey, I have always felt the closest to God when I was praying. My parents taught me that faith is a consistent practice and I should invite God into my life every day. And I've learned through prayer how it affects me. Prayer is a way to reach out to God, and because God cares and he listens, he will give you exactly what he sees fit to help you. My parents have demonstrated their faith in God from my earliest memories. When I was younger, my family used to pray together every night. They taught me that prayer isn't just your own words. For example, my mom liked searching for new prayers we could read aloud and pray together. When we were younger, my brother and I used to share a room and her parents would pray with us almost every night and help us fall asleep. That's where I learned to pray every night, and my daily habit of prayer now came from those nightly rituals. 
Prayer has always been an important part of my spiritual life, and it covers a lot of pieces of my life and thoughts that I have. Every night, I thank God for what he's given me that day or what he's given th me throughout my life in general. I ask him for a good night's rest and every, anything else I'd hope for, like another's protection, and then I ask forgiveness of my sins. This has always helped me put my mind at rest so I can go to bed easier. Every time I pray, I feel as though some weight has been lifted, and not just for me. I believe that praying can help others, like praying for a loved one who is sick. I believe God hears me and helps me in any way he can, whether directly or through his creation and the people in my life. For example, once I was feeling sad and I, after I prayed, my cat came in to comfort me. It's a small thing, but I know God cares about every hard day we have. A scripture I've recently read uh, and learned reflects my reliance on God pretty well. Psalm 34, 4 reads, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. I love this verse because it's exactly what I believe prayer accomplishes. It doesn't necessarily fix your problems, but does help you through them and calm your fears. Later in that Psalm, lines 17 through 20 say, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. These verses also describe my feeling of protection after praying and the guidance I feel it gives me. In all, I feel that prayer has brought me closer and closer to the Lord and the people around me. Writing the statement of faith has really helped me realize how the last two years of confirmation has strengthened my relationship with God and taught me so much about him and how prayer affects my day-to-day -day life. In life, I get distracted by a lot of meaningless things, but in my last two years, I've learned a lot in confirmation about the things that should really matter to me. Along the way, I've expanded my understanding of faith, learned about other people's faith, and just more about the Bible in general. I've seen Christ, Christ reflected in the lives of many people. Every other week in confirmation, we did interviews with parents, and were able to learn a lot about their faith today, both today and when they were younger. Almost everyone we talked to had strong beliefs in Christ and rarely, rarely missed church on Sundays. Faith was a big part of most of their lives growing up, and church was always on their weekend routine. Most of them also had their own confirmation, and they went through the same steps we did. Another commonality they shared was the important role of their grandparents in their journey of faith. All of them had moments in life where they knew God was present, and I think almost everyone will experience that in their lifetime. Just like all of us, they have gone through rough times when they had to rely on God, and in the end, they always thank God for getting them through it. All of the people we heard from relied on God in good times and bad. God says he will reward reward those that trust him. Jesus says in Matthew 7, 7, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. However, even though I have faith that he will reward my discipline and persistence, like he says in this verse, we all know that it doesn't always work out the way you want. That can be a big challenge to life and you'll have to learn to get through those hard times just because you didn't succeed or accomplish your goal. That doesn't mean God isn't there. Jesus tells a parable about this in Luke 15, 11 through 32. There was a man with two sons, and he had given both their own share of the family property. The older son was disciplined and a hard worker. He stayed and worked for his father, as was expected. The younger son took his inheritance, left the country, and wasted all of his money. But when the younger son came back, his father forgave him and threw a party. The older son was very angry. He had stayed with his father and worked for him all this time without having a party but his dad threw a party for someone who ran away and wasted everything. This is a perfect example of when hard work doesn't seem to be rewarded the way we think it should. At times we won't get our way and someone else will be rewarded. But there are also times when we will get what we want and will be rewarded, even if we may not have deserved it. People have different ways of looking at this. The older son thought it was unfair and he felt unappreciated. 
the younger son felt forgiven and lucky to have another chance. Just like God, the father in the story wasn't comparing the two sons and their actions. He was grateful to have his family, family together again. I feel that Jesus is saying that everyone makes mistakes and he will always be willing to give us second chances. I think this story really shows the ups and downs in life and the family and how our families are so important to get us through hard times. Throughout my two years of confirmation, I've learned a lot. I think faith is a very important aspect in someone's life and everyone should get the opportunity to learn about it like we have. When Jesus was on earth, he worked very hard even when he was tired or frustrated. He did not hesitate to give time to those who came to him for help. I believe this is how we should follow in Jesus' footsteps. I have a lot of things I like to work hard at and I feel like it is showing that Jesus is at work in my life. I trust that God will help me make good choices and work hard for the right things, even when they don't go the way I expect them to. Okay, now the ORLC Sunday School students, you know who you are. Please come up.
All right, we are going to be moving into the, the time for the affirmation of baptism, walking, walking through that with the students, but just Sarah has one thing she wants to say first. It's very short, but, um, and I warned the kids I was going to call them out just a little bit, so be ready. Um, so like Jordan said, this is the, well, he didn't say this, but this is the first confirmation class that I have taught, um, and it was the product of quite a lot of nagging and guilt trips that got me there, um, but it very much surprised me and how much it blessed me and changed me. I mean, I certainly, we all kind of come to faith and we build up a lot of, well, maybe, maybe you haven't, but I have built up a lot of baggage, (laughs) a lot of spiritual baggage. And, um, this was a really incredible opportunity for me to kind of sift through all that and get back on my feet in a new way spiritually. And I'm so grateful that I had that opportunity. Um, so my family has a tradition, um, my parents and siblings and stuff. Every New Year's, we all sit around and we share the best thing from the past year. And I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my mouth when I said, teaching confirmation class. <laughs> um, these kids, who never stop interrupting me, threw food at me and each other, um, and had to be bribed constantly How were they the best thing of my year? Um, I think the short answer is that they are great, and so is the subject matter. Even when they were whispering to each other or texting under the table while I was trying to tell them something or teach, something was happening. Something was happening in the background, and I think you heard and saw that this morning and over the course of the class. They get it in a real way. They get that faith is a journey, and it's not always linear. Um, They get that love and service are the most important expressions of faith, and that God is not only with them, he is for them. He has their back, he cares, he loves them. And I said that over and over. It's a pretty big difference between just believing there's a God and believing that that God loves you. And they get all that. So... Um, I want to give a special thank you to the parents who made sure we had food every Wednesday. That was critical. Um, Who were willing to let me kind of figure out and find a way to do this that fit both myself and the kids. Um, And especially the parents who are willing to come and be interviewed and share part of their faith journey with the students. That was really meaningful. So thank you for all that. Um, We're going to have them come up now, right? and go into the affirmation of baptism. All right, here we go. Now, this, is, this is, can be found, this part of the, the service can be found on page 198 in the green hymnal, and so you can follow along. Uh, most of it has, uh, is, is between myself and the group, but there is a part, uh, the prayers, which I'll ask the congregation to be uh, responsive or to be responding in the bold-faced letters. So um, if you would turn in to 198, and we can follow along there. All right, I'll turn it. Oh, okay. Um, These persons have been instructed in the Christian faith and desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Tegan Young, Kaylee Van Ank, McKenna Cook, Allie Lugadinsky, Brogan Young, Alice Gackle, Nathan Sheely, and Natalie Huber. Thank you. Dear friends, we rejoice that you now 
desire to make public profession of your faith and to assume greater responsibility in the life of our Christian community and its mission in the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of his church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from his word God's loving purpose for you and for all creation. You have been nourished at his holy table and called to be witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, therefore, I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil and all his empty promises? If so, respond by saying together, I do. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Amen. At this time, I'll have the congregation please stand. We are on page 200, and we're going to do the prayers. And as I mentioned, I'll have the congregation respond with the words, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are affirming their baptism and for all the baptized everywhere, that they may be redeemed from all evil and rescued from the way of sin and death. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. that the Holy Spirit may open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, in your mercy, that they may be kept in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That they may be sent into the world in witness to your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That they may be brought to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Yes. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear his word and share in his supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of our Lord Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I'm going to ask each of them to respond individually with the words, if so, with the words, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Taken. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, through water and the spirit, you have made these men and women your own. You have forgave them all their sins and brought them to newness of life. 
Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence through Jesus Christ, your son and our Lord. Amen. All right, at this time, we're going to transition if you guys would. Go to the kneeling. This time I'm going, to pray for, I'm going to pray for each of you individually. And this prayer can be found for those following along on the bottom of page 201. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Tegan the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him. Empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Nathan the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in broken the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in McKenna the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Kaylee the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Alice the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering. And bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Allie the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Natalie the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'll have the whole uh, group stand up, please. Now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Please turn. At this time, let's have a round of applause for our company. Okay, you can take your seats again.
right. At this time, we'll have our offering, and I'll invite the ushers forward to gather today's offering. Okay, at this time, we have just a couple more things, but I wanted to um, make mention of a couple of announcements. First of all, uh, for those who are visiting today um, from other places, if you would take some time as you go out to, to write your name down in the guest book, that would be wonderful. So if you could do that, please. And then also, um, as I said, we are going to be having a potluck, so I want to invite everybody to stay for that. We are going to be celebrating the conferments and celebrating our seniors. I, I, don't, I, I know Dylan is here, so Dylan Andres is one of our seniors. I can see him back there, and I don't know if Mark is here, but as you see in the insert, um, we, are, we, we do have them here as well. So we want, to, we want to celebrate them. Please take some time and stay for that. But with that, I wanted to just say a prayer over the meal so that um, once we finish, everybody can go about their way and find some food and start eating and not wonder if we need to pray or something like that. So, um, dear Lord, we thank you for today, uh, for all of the fullness of today, the meaning in it all. And we thank you for the family and the friends and the community surrounding these, uh, these confirmands, these graduates. Lord, as um, they each in their own way embark on a new part of life, we're, our prayer is with them, and most of all, that they, they would know and feel that you are with them and that you are for them. And so now for the meal that we are about to partake in, we thank you for it, for those who have prepared it, and we ask that you would bless it to our bodies and bless our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, at this time, I'll have... ask you to receive the, benedic the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Go in peace, serve the Lord. All right, you can remain standing for our closing hymn now. Take my life, page 406. Take my life. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them Boy. 
voice and let me sing Always only for my King Take my lips and let them be Filled with messages from Thee Take my silver and my gold Not a might would I withhold Take my intellect and use Every power as Thou shalt choose I will and make it Thine It shall be no longer What <coughs> it is Thine own It shall be Thy royal throne Take my love Amen. Thank you again. So I'm going to ask one more thing that you all not just immediately rush either out the door or to the to the food. Just linger for maybe a few minutes, visit a little bit. And then I know there's a sign on the back door of the council room that says enter. And I take that to mean that's where we go in <laughs> and then come out the other way. So don't go in the other door. Otherwise, there's going to be a bunch of collisions. So anyway, just take a few minutes and then I think they'll get some of the food set up if it's it's ready and then go about your way and enjoy your time. Thank you.